ladies and gentlemen, I really did not read a whole lot of books the second half of August, so this is going to be short, and you're probably all very happy about that. So, in full disclosure, I read four things the second half of August. Three of them were digital format, two on my Kindle and one on my iPad, and then one physical book, which was like one of the better books I've read in months. The other three were pretty unremarkable as far as that goes. So I read Deadly Arrangements by Annie Adams. I believe I got this free on my Kindle many years ago and I am finally getting to it because it's a cozy mystery which I love and adore and it is a whole lot of fun. And this one is actually the second book in the series. I did not read the first book. I don't feel the need to read the first book but I would like to read books three and four, so it wasn't a total loss. This was a whole lot of fun. This is set in a florist shop, and our protagonist is the owner of said shop, and murder happens with, um, and a kidnapping and things of that nature uh, of people in a wedding that she is providing the bouquets for, and things all kinds of intertwine, and there's witty dialogue, which is like, yay, my favorite thing. Um, but is it like the best series ever? Probably not, but it was a whole lot of fun, so I guess that's all that matters. I gave it three stars, and like I said, uh, if they're not too expensive, I might actually get some of the other books in the series, because I really like to have cozy mystery series like on standby for when I'm in a mood. Then I read Catch and Release by Laura Drury. This I got in a book box. Um, it was like a digital uh, arc of some sort for this book and I had downloaded it and for some reason I didn't have a book with me which is very weird uh, but I had my phone and I was like oh let me read that why not? Um, this is actually the third book in a series. Again, I haven't read the first two books, but as with most contemporary romances, it's usually not necessary to read them all in a row unless you really, really, really love the author. So this is about a TV producer. She's going to this place in Alaska where they do fishing expeditions and have like a almost like a bed and breakfast or like a weekend retreat sort of thing for people who like to fish and is filming like a um, reality show almost based on with this. And she ends up falling in love with one of the brothers who owns it. The other two brothers are of course attached already. Uh, it was good, nothing really to write home about. A little bit unbelievable just because she's too nice to be in television. There's no way she would make it anywhere in television because she actually didn't want drama on her show and yeah, no one would watch a show like that either. So let's just throw that out there. Not that I care usually about believability of books because you have to suspend reality to really enjoy a book anyway, but this one was a little weird. I'm like, there's just no way. Um, and it did suffer from the lack of communication between the two characters, which can get incredibly frustrating. That being said, it wasn't crap, and I gave it three stars. Then I rectified the fact that I read the last book in a series and read the only other book that I own in this series, and I don't think I will be catching up or playing with any of the other books in the series. I'm going to call this series Finished. And that is um, the Wyndham series by Grace Burrow. I read Lady Maggie's Secret Scandal. It was cute and fun. It was a three star read for me and it suffered from stupid female stubbornness and a lack of communication, which just really, really annoy me. Then I read a five-star read, A Man Called Ove by Friedrich Bachmann. I loved this. This really is about this man called Ove, and he is a cranky, cranky old man. As the book goes on, you start learning about his life, and he's kind of like starting to get adopted by the next door neighbors who just move in. And I don't know, it was just so good. It was very quiet in a way though. So, you know, I'm not a big literary fiction reader. 
because there are too many emotions. I really just don't like emotions. Emotions suck, to be perfectly honest. I like to laugh, that's about it. I don't like to cry and I don't like to feel feelings because I just try to ignore that I have any of those things called feelings. That's why I don't read literary fiction very much, but whenever I do read it, I usually love it. So go figure. I, I cried, I woke my husband up in the middle of the night crying at the end of this book. Yeah, I stayed up all night to finish this book. <laughs> so there are chapters that are titled A Man Called Ove, and like the first one is A Man Called Ove buys a computer that is not a computer. And then there are chapters that start with a man, like this one where a man who was Ove, and those are background. Those chapters are entirely his background, although there is more of this woven into the other chapters. And like, I'm not explaining this book right because you know what, you just need to go and read it and talk about it with me because this was really good. Uh, really good about not judging people and friending people no matter how crappy they seem. Sometimes those people need friends more than anyone. So anyway, I'm not going to talk anymore. That was that. That is my wrap up. I will be coming at you with a TBR soon. Or if it's not out already, I have no idea how I'm going to post these videos because I'm doing like a bunch of them in a row. So I will talk to you all later. Bye.